Today, I'm gonna to show you how to use the new frame tool in Photoshop CC 2019, and we're gonna compare it with one of my favorite tools, Clipping Masks. Hey there, and welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace. You can find me on Flurn. Dot com where we make learning fun. Now in today's episode, we're talking all about the new frame tool in Photoshop CC 2019. It allows you to create a frame, which by default is gonna be either a square or a circle, and then place images into that frame. Now, this is a wonderful tool for those beginning in Photoshop and for simple applications. For people looking to do more advanced applications, we're gonna show you how to use clipping masks to basically do everything the frame tool can do, plus a few additional things. So to start off, let's go ahead and show you how to use the new frame tool. Here in Photoshop, we're starting off with an image that's a perfect example of when to use the frame tool. Now, our frame tool gives us just a couple options. We can choose a rectangle or an ellipse. So it's a really easy tool to use. Let's go ahead and just click and drag around the area you would like to make a frame. If you need to readjust, simply hold the space bar down and you can move it around while you're making the frame itself. So if you need to just like, for instance, I need to push this up to the left a little bit. There we go. There's our frame. Now, once we have our frame, you can see it creates a new frame layer and these are the contents of the frame itself. Now the key is getting something into the frame. Now the great thing about the frame tool is that it works with smart objects. For instance, if we place a large image into this small frame, we can still scale it up or down and we're not gonna lose resolution. Not to mention if we placed a linked smart object, it's not gonna increase the file size of this file. So you can take many different files from your computer place them into these frames and it's not going to make your file size any larger. So now that we have our frame in place, we wanna go ahead and put our image in that. And for that, we're gonna use the place command. So let's go to file and down to place. Now you see we have two options here. We have place embedded and place linked. Place embedded will take the external file and actually put it inside of this file. And that's gonna increase file size. So. It's a really good choice if you, for instance, need to take this file on the road with you, put it on a portable hard drive and work on the file later. If you don't need to bring that external file with you, place linked is a great option because it'll just keep it where it is on your computer. It'll link to it and it won't increase the file size of this file. So in this case, we're gonna choose place linked. So place linked, and I'm gonna simply choose my Grand Canyon image here. By the way, you can download all of these images if you wanna follow along on flurn.com. You can just follow the link right down below. So let's go ahead and click on our Grand Canyon and hit place. There we go. And the nice thing about the frame tool is that it will place your object directly inside of that frame. So there we go. You can see we have a Grand Canyon right here. Now, if I do need to simply change the size of my frame, I can click on the frame itself and for instance, I can make the frame larger or smaller. Whoops, there we go. In this case, I'm making the frame larger than <laughs> the original boundaries. Let's go ahead and undo that. There we are. Or I can click on the object itself and hit Control or Command T, and I can scale this, and you can see it's going to be only visible inside of my frame. So we have the ability to change the frame size as well as what's ever embedded inside of the frame. So that's basically the idea with the frame tool. You're creating a frame and then putting an image inside of that frame. Now we've got four basic shapes you can use with the frame tool. We've got our rectangle and our ellipse, which we already showed you. You can also convert text into a frame. So if you wanna type a word out and place an image over that word, you can do that as well. Or you can create a shape using shape tools or the pen tool and then place an image inside of that shape. So for simple applications, the frame tool really is easy to use. But for advanced users, they might find a few things missing. For instance, maybe you wanna put multiple different images in your frame, or you wanna use a complex shape to create your frame boundary. And for those cases, I recommend using a clipping mask instead. Clipping masks will allow you to do everything the frame tool allows you to do, plus quite a bit more. So let's go ahead and jump into Photoshop. We're gonna use this exact same example. I'm gonna show you how to do it with clipping masks, and then we're gonna get to a little bit more of an advanced technique. So back in our image, we're gonna go ahead and make our frame invisible. 
Now, I'm gonna start off by just creating a rectangle using the rectangle tool, and this can be done in a number of different ways, but for now, we're just gonna go with a simple rectangle. Boop, there we go. Now, when we have our rectangle, or literally anything on this layer, I could have gone with my brush tool and painted over there, made a selection with my marquee tool and filled it. Basically, anytime I have an object on my layer, I can use a clipping mask. So, here we have our just a regular old rectangle. Now, let's go ahead and go to File. We're still gonna go to Place Linked, so we're still getting the advantages of using linked smart objects. I'm gonna go to my Grand Canyon, and we're gonna hit Place. Now, in this case, it's just gonna place this in my image. So we're gonna hit enter there. I can move my Grand Canyon around, but you can see in this case, it's not linked to this rectangle that I created before. To get these two to be linked, in other words, I want this Grand Canyon to only show up where my rectangle is, we're gonna use a clipping mask. So to create a clipping mask, simply right click on the layer that's on the top and go to create clipping mask. And what that does is makes this layer only visible where the layer it's pointing to. So you can see we now have a little arrow and it's pointing to our rectangle. So I can still continue to move this around and it's only gonna be visible there. I can hit Control or Command T and resize this and you can see again, it's only gonna be visible inside of that frame. Now I can grab this rectangle, I can move the rectangle around if I'd like to and I could hit Control or Command T and still change the size of my rectangle. So you can see, it looks a little bit different, but the functionality is basically the same. Now we have a little bit more functionality as well. For instance, if I would like to go to file and we're gonna go down to place linked again, this time I'm gonna choose our jungle image. We'll hit place there and hit enter. I'm gonna right click and go to create clipping mask again. So now I've got two different images that are clipped to this one rectangle and I can move this around here. For instance, if I wanted to lower the opacity, I know this is a little bit silly, but get a little bit of a double exposure, now I've got two different images here on that one photo. Or I could change the blending mode of these images, there we go, and watch how the two blend together, and they're still directly in the same frame, which is incredibly helpful. Now using clipping masks, we also have the ability to add adjustment layers clipped to that original layer. So, I'm gonna go ahead and grab a black and white adjustment layer. Okay, right now you can see it's visible everywhere. So let's right click and go to create clipping mask. You can see here it's only visible again where the rectangle is. I can turn this rectangle off or on and I can turn each one of these layers off and on as well. So not only do we have multiple images that we can clip, but we can also use adjustment layers as well. So we've seen how clipping mask can take the place of the frame tool and give you some more options in this case, using a simple shape, just a rectangle. But what about using a more complicated shape? Back in Photoshop, let's go ahead and open up our next image. We're gonna take a look at this leaf. And for this image, I wanna place an image over top of the leaf itself and not have it be visible on the background. Now, that's a pretty complicated shape. It's more complicated than something you could actually make with the frame tool. But we can do this using clipping masks. So here's how we're gonna do it. We're gonna to go to select and down here to color range. I'm gonna simply click here on the background and we're gonna bring our fuzziness down. So you're gonna see in this case, it's gonna select the background and not the leaf. Let's hit okay there. Now I wanna select the leaf. So we're gonna to go to select and down to inverse. And then I'm just gonna pop this on a new layer by hitting control or command J. So now that I have this on a new layer, I can clip anything to this layer. For instance, I could create a new layer we're gonna right clip and go to create clipping mask. And I could simply use my brush tool, grab a color here, there we go, and paint right over top of this leaf. So you can see it's only gonna be visible where the leaf is visible. Same idea as the frame tool. Now let's go ahead and throw an image in and see how it responds using the same example. We'll go to file, down to place linked, and we're gonna choose the same jungle image. And let's go ahead and hit place. There we are. We're gonna make it a little bit larger. Let's just zoom out so we can stretch it to fill the entire image. And again, I want this only to be visible where the leaf is visible. So we're gonna right click and go to create clipping mask. And here we go. So now we have our image only visible where this leaf is visible. 
Now, we've got just a little bit of a light sky here. Let's say I wanna make the sky a little bit darker. I can grab an adjustment layer. We're gonna go down to levels. And I'm gonna go ahead and grab my blue channel. We're gonna pull from the right to the left. Again, let's clip this. Right click and go to create clipping mask. There we go. And a little bit from our green channel. And there we have it. So obviously you can see I can continue to make these adjustments and they're only gonna show up over top of my image. So there we have it, our adjustments, as well as our jungle image over top of just the leaf. So there we have it, our frame tool is perfect for simple applications, and when you're ready to get a little bit more advanced, you can use clipping masks to clip multiple images as well as adjustment layers and use more complicated shapes. Thank you so much for hanging out with me and learning Photoshop. If you enjoyed this video, give it a big thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. We'll send you free Photoshop tutorials every single week. What could be better than that? I can't think of anything. Thank you so much. I'll learn you later. Bye everyone. <sighs> That's the secret uh, Photoshop technique right there. <laughs> That's a wrap. That's a wrap, folks. That's a riggedy riggedy wrap. <laughs>